Hi, your child back arching could be happening for many, many reasons. However, there are three main types of reasons. It really freaks out people because they just assume it's going to be cerebral palsy, but that's not always the case. I'm going to move this because I think it's on my volume. <laughs> the fun of doing lives. Okay, that looks better. So the three main reasons why your child might be back arching. Yes, it could be cerebral palsy, but you'll tend to see the roots inward rotation, the lack of inability to cross the midline through the elbows, and also to the wrist. The wrist will commit, the wrist will commit, right? But it's, it's this movement that creates a back arch. The other main reason is, is the second reason is the vision. Sometimes your child's vision is better than their movements. We don't want it to be that way. They should be synchronized. All developmental movement goes with all functional vision. It's just the way it is, right? But if a child has issues crossing midline, a visual midline this way or this way, what they'll do is the eyes stay fixed and they'll back arch to see something, right? And so they're looking, right? And then at some point, they're either going to fall backwards or, again, they, they get into this, this back arch. You will see complications of this later on, too, if they have like a bear crawl or club crawl, the asymmetry in the crawl, because the eyes are having issues crossing midline. And so the child will look up this way and it creates a sideways crawl because they're not going to crawl where they can't see. The third reason is, or the main reason, or one of the main reasons is, is laryngomalacia. Laryngomalacia is a condition where the valve could be overgrown or scarred due to intubation, NG tubes, or anything like that. This valve changes the swallow to the breath, right? And, and so if a child can't control it, the breath-swallow ratio right at birth, Right? They, they build back arch because what happens when you go into your drowning, right? You, when, when, if I were if you're drowning in water, the, the natural tendency is to do this. And so you'll see a baby back arch. Now, that doesn't mean you're going to find a respiratory rate of decrease, right? But what you're going to see, though, is that they'll, they'll choose breathing over anything else, swallowing, talking, or even developing. Uh, if a child goes like this and they feel they can't breathe, Right? They'll, they'll, they'll wrench the neck back up. And really, it's an ear, nose, and throat has to scope in and look to see if that valve somehow is either scarred or, um, again, overgrown. It usually is overgrown, and they'll say, oh, to 11 months. But I'm telling you right now, if it affects development, and I know the last thing you want to hear is surgery, but that's that could be where your child's at. I've got kiddos that literally are, are stuck in a C curve. Right, because the laryngomalacia or the spasticity had to be there. Because if they learn to do too many movements, where I go to do this, I can't breathe. Oh, I do that, right? And that's where we start saying, oh, it's apraxia, dystonia, and all that. No, it's laryngomalacia, and it needs to be addressed. It needs to be addressed seriously, um, and it's it's very overlooked. Um, you will have, and again, within this, possibly colicky, GERD, these kind of things, again, that have to be into, but, but there are many different reasons for back arching, not just cerebral palsy. A child that cannot do something because it hurts them or it's difficult, especially if the breath-swallow ratio is off, right? This is why you really have to work on that um, and make sure you're assessing your child. Right, but to say that they're, they're they've got GERD because they're developmental delays, sickness and 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 development have nothing to do with each other. But if a child is sick enough, they're not going to develop, and that's where you have to be really careful on all of this. So thanks.